Well, uh, if you would like to follow along today as we, we go through this message, I want to remind you that uh, there's sermon notes um, that you can find uh, on the uh, Church Center app, and that will help you walk through what we're going to look at here today. We've got one more, one more week today that we're going to uh, go through this three-part series that we've been looking at since we've be- begun to uh, meet each other again in person um, on the church. And next week, we're jumping right back into our study as we work through one verse at a time through the book of 1 Peter. Um, so if, if uh, you're new to us or haven't been around what we do here, usually we go right through a book of the Bible and then we jump to another book of the Bible. And um, we've just taken a little break from that over these three weeks as we've kind of focused in on the church and what the church is all about. And um, before we jump into this message, I'd like to pray for us one more time and just ask that God would uh, give me the words to say and the words not to say because I've got a lot to try to cover (laughs) in a short amount of time. And so I'm going to talk really, really fast. And it's not because I had too much coffee. It's because I want to get a lot in today, all right? So pray with me and let's ask the Lord to guide our time. God, we do thank you for this day. And we do thank you that you would love us so much that you would reach out of heaven and come in the flesh, in, the, in Jesus Christ, to come and provide a way of salvation for us. And we know, as we saw this morning, there are some people that reject that and reject you. But we're so grateful that you would still love us in such a way that when we come to you, that you transform our lives and you change us. We're grateful that you have bound us together as a church and we're grateful for the work that you have done and are doing and will do among us as a church. And so I pray today as we look at this, this body of yours, the church, for, for one more week here and focus on it, Lord, that you would continue to give us vision for what it is, who we are in it, and what our part is in it. And we thank you that you would call us to your body, to call us your children, and to be invited into your family. And so today, I pray that you'd speak through me and speak into the hearts of those that can hear it here today. And uh, God, teach us what it means to be part of a church, we pray. And it is in Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. So, to give you a recap, if you haven't been here, you haven't... um, you know, known where we've been in these past couple weeks. This is, like I said, the final week in this little mini-series entitled Church Life. And we looked at first the architecture of the church, meaning how did God structure this building? We jumped out of First Peter, where we've been, talking about the living stones that are being built together into this church that God has, has created. Then we looked at the anatomy of the church, looked at a different image out of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 that talks about the church being the body of Christ and what is that all about. And this week, I'm hoping to bring it all together and now talk about the activity of the church, what it is that the church actually does and how you can be involved in those things. And my goal, I, I think I told you this from week one, my goal of the series would, would be that you would be able to sharpen your vision of what the church is, what does the church do, and how you then fit into that. And it might have been a challenge for you. And there will be some things that I probably say today that are, are kind of a challenge. On Friday night at our, our life group that we go to, um, we had some good conversation about this, where we had some discussion of, yeah, well, how does this fit into the capital C overarching church around the world versus the local church and um, there's some challenges in that and that's okay and what we've learned in it is that a church is given life by God it's his doing first and foremost it's established by him and it's built up by him because what does he do he takes his people and he knits them together into a unique body and then calls them to step into the world on mission that's the, the way it works. What mission is it that, that God calls his church, all of the churches to do? Well, all churches actually share the same great commission that Jesus gave. You may remember at the end of the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 28, um, Jesus speaks to his disciples and he says, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And what's he follow that up with? It's called the Great Commission. He says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them 
to obey all that I've commanded you, or to observe all that I've commanded you. And then he says, and behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. That's the, the, the mission that is a shared mission of the universal church. That's what we're called to do. And so Jesus calls us, he saves us, he joins us into the body, then he equips us to serve the body and engage with the world. That's the activity of the church. That's the activity of our church, the activity of South Point, to do those things and fulfill that mission. Now, individually, individual churches have slight differences and unique ways that they go about doing that, fulfilling that, that shared mission that we have. And that's what we're going to talk a little more about here today. For those of you who don't know, um, or for those of you who care to reminisce, about four and a half years ago, a handful of us gathered together and began to pray about the possibilities of starting this church. That's how long South Point has been around, uh, about four and a half years. We didn't have the support of a, a church denomination. We didn't have a big financial donor. Uh, we didn't have a building, still don't, obviously. Um, we didn't have some you know, superstar leader or a foolproof church growth plan. We didn't have any of those things, but what we had was a shared love for Jesus, a love for each other, and a desire to grow and live life as Christians together. We didn't even have a guarantee from God that this church would thrive or even survive. I mean, I told the, the launch team at the very beginning, I'm like, well, guys, there's the handful of us. We'll see if anybody comes on the first Sunday. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't know. But what we did was we committed ourselves to his work and to each other. And God's been faithful, and he's used this church over these years for that work. That's a beautiful thing to be able to be a part of. And the past and the future have a shared goal. All right, so God, through Jesus, Jesus gave the mission of the church. But then individually, as we start looking at how those different churches function, God will give a vision for the church underneath that mission. And, and the vision of South Point, as John mentioned just a second ago in the announcements, it's this vision statement that we, we crafted back then at the beginning, but it still is for us now and going forward. Our goal is to become a healthy, vibrant cr Christian community that is devoted to Jesus Christ and his transformation of our lives as we learn to love one another and our community for God's glory and our fulfillment. That's what we're aiming to do. That's what we're trying to do. And as we relaunch, each of us have the opportunity to commit ourselves, or in some cases recommit ourselves, into what God's doing in this church. And I think it is time for all of us to ask God what he has going forward. Because what he did in the past is wonderful, but what about the future? Where are we headed? And how can we best invest ourselves into the activity of his church? How do we accomplish the vision that he's given us? Together. This is a joint project. This is a, 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 a thing a, that God is doing together with his people. That's how we accomplish that vision that he's given us. It's together. It hinges on that community and, and tying our hearts together. So if you desire to be a part of this church, that is the mission and vision that you're invited to commit yourself to. To be united in a commitment to this group of people that God's placed us in. This time, this place, this people. Remember last week we looked at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27, where he said, Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. That's who you are. And all the parts we learned as we went through that entire section of 1 Corinthians 12, all those parts are interconnected. They're woven together. You know, think about your body. It's got all these systems and tissues and ligaments and tendons and muscle and all these things, blood vessels and, and nerves that connect the body together. We weep together and rejoice together, all bound together by one Savior, one Spirit, and one Father, therefore one family. So a shared connection and commitment are critical for a healthy church. You've got to have that. 
You've got to have that connection and commitment for the church to be healthy. Now, already I can hear in some of your minds the first thing that might pop up with that, the, the, the reaction against that. You're like, well, hold on now. Do I really have to even be connected to a church to be a Christian? Do you, that's a question that comes up. Do I even have to go to church to be a Christian? Well, or the, 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 the connected question is, well, do I have to go to church to be a Christian or to go to heaven? Well, technically, the answer is no. I like what a, a particular author named Kent Hughes wrote in a book that I'm reading where he was asked that very question, do you have to go to church to be a Christian? Um, and he said, no, but in the same way, you don't, you don't necessarily have to go home to be married. This is what he means by that. Picture this. You got two people that fall in love. They decide, all right, we want to, we want to get married. And they plan this wedding and they call everybody in and they go through the whole ceremony and everybody's there and they're all dressed and they, they come up to the, the pastor and he reads through the vows and they make the vows and all this. And at the very end he says, and now I pronounce you man and wife. And the husband and wife look at each other and they, they shake hands and say, thank you. Thanks for being part of that. That was so cool. Um, I'm glad that all of our friends and family could be here. And you know what? This was so good. Let's get back together again in like a year or so, and we'll go out to dinner or something, and we'll remember the fact that we were married. Now, other than that, you know, I'll see you next year maybe. But I'm going home to my house. You go home to your house. You live your life. I'll live my life. And that's that. And what kind of marriage is that? <laughs> I mean, are they married? Technically, yeah, you're married. But is there any healthy relationship that is coming from that? Well, uh, no. It's very hard to have a relationship that's healthy without going home if you're married. And I know that for some of you, and actually looking out at you today, I realize that, um, you know, I, I'd expect a few deployment amens out of that because uh, there are many people in the military here. They're like, yeah, tell me about it. It's hard whenever uh, the one spouse is gone for months on end. But how does the Bible exhort us? My question is, to you, if you say, well, do I really even have to be connected to a church? What does the Bible tell us? In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23 to 25, here's what the writer there says. Let us, as Christians, hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. Now, how are you going to know that? How are you going to be able to stir up other people? You're going to have to know those other people. And he goes on in verse 25 and says, not neglecting to meet together. Not neglecting to meet together. That's coming to church, guys. Gathering together as, as the church. As is the habit of some. And it's true. There are lots of Christians, lots of believers that say, I don't want to meet with anybody else. I don't want the accountability. I don't want the, the, the interaction. I'm an introvert. I'd rather just stay at home and watch it online or do whatever it is. But they say, don't neglect to meet together as is a habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. And here's what I, I believe. Right now, as our whole planet is slowly leaning into getting things back connected the way they need to be connected. Um, our habits are in flux. Has anybody else felt that way over this past year? You realize, oh my goodness, all my routines, all the things that I did and the way that I did them, everything's been disrupted. If you've got kids in school, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Our habits are, are in flux. But you go back and you look at, at even when God established the nation of Israel as his people. He set up sacred requirements for corporate worship. He actually set it up and said, everybody who's part of this nation, they're going to be at church. Everyone who was a part of the nation was obligated to participate. Now, we know as, as Christians, we're no longer under the same laws that the people of Israel were under. But the principles for a healthy spiritual life are the same. What principles am I, talk, am I talking about? I'm talking about regular worship and community. Honoring the Sabbath, giving of tithes and offerings, obeying the Ten Commandments. Those principles still are in effect. 
And if you continue to live that way, that's where you see the, the health coming to your spiritual life. And if you are truly a Christian here today, you've put your hope and trust in Jesus as your Savior, then you're already part of the capital C Church, right? You're already part of the church. But as a Christian, you should be committed to supporting a local expression of that church if you want to be healthy and if you want the body of Christ to be healthy. It takes us working together. And one of the questions that I get sometimes, I had it recently, is um, a question about, okay, well then how, what does that look like? You're calling me to a commitment, but what does that actually look like? What does membership look like in, at South Point? Well, for us, and from the very beginning, we talked about this and looked at some of the pros and cons of having a formalized membership. And, and honestly, we didn't fall on a really hard line one way or the other. What we've ended up with because of that is a very informal sort of membership. Basically, you, basically if you say, yeah, I'm a member of that church, you're a member of this church. And, and we don't have you sign a document or, you know, we don't um, do a background check and, and all that kind of stuff, scan your retina <laughs> um, to say, you're part of our church, you're a member. We don't do that, but there are some benefits to that <laughs> because sometimes when we actually have to put our name on a piece of paper, we realize I'm, I'm, that's a, more of a statement. I'm actually saying I really want to be a part of that. And I don't know, maybe, maybe that should change in the future, or maybe it shouldn't, I don't know. But generally what we have at South Point is very informal. But, but what then are the, the informal requirements of being part of a local church, any local church? Well, I think that there are individual, there's an individual responsibility, but there's also a shared responsibility. The individual responsibility that every Christian has is to keep an ongoing relationship with God. What, what's that mean? I mean, things like aiming towards growing in spiritual disciplines like prayer and reading the word and uh, studying the, the Bible and worshiping and, and giving to maintain a personal relationship with Jesus, a commitment to follow him, a devotion to life then within the church and a love for others that engages them. That's just being a Christian. That's how you continue your walk as a Christian. It's not a one-time decision. It's a life change. But I think there's also a shared responsibility, a shared responsibility, an ongoing relationship to a local expression of the church. And, and how does that work? When I say it's a relationship, it's not just a, a one-way street. You both give and receive when you're connected into a church. That's how it's supposed to be. We give and receive spiritual support when we gather together and worship together. The, the events that we go to and put on together, we're giving and receiving. We give and receive emotional support. We give encouragements to each other and exhortations to each other. But we also receive encouragement and receive exhortation. We give and receive intellectual support. We learn together. We, we gather understanding and we give it and we get it. We give and receive physical support, whether it's we're feeding you one day or you're bringing food one day. We're helping one another, we're serving one another. And we give and receive financial support, tithes and offerings. And at other times in your life, you might be the other end of that to receive benevolence from the church if you're stuck in a hard spot. It's, this, it's a, a shared responsibility. But either way, we're devoted to his transformation of our lives and to each other. So when, when I knew it was time for us to be able to get back together and start meeting in person again and seeing what God had for us, one of the questions that I was asking was, okay, Lord, are we complete? Are we healthy? And if there's areas where we're incomplete or unhealthy, where do we need to go and where do we need to grow? And I had to ask myself the question, are we ready to be the body of Christ, the hands and feet of Jesus to this community around here? Get a load of this. If you took a two-mile circle from right here, two miles around us, you'd hit three different area codes, or zip codes, sorry. Three different zip codes within two miles right here. 91913, 91914, and 91915. You know how many people live in just those three zip codes? According to zip data, 81,078 people. 81,078 people. 
when you go on and add the other zip codes of the rest of Chula Vista, 91910 and 91911, you add another 150,000 people in just those two zip codes. If we pushed a little bit farther north into Spring Valley and Benita, it adds another 26,000. Guys, that's a lot of souls in just this area around us. And I, I, I know there's a lot of people that are walking with the Lord and know the Lord or connected to churches around here, but I promise you, there are thousands upon thousands of people that don't know the Lord or walking in darkness right around us right now. So how do we do that? How do we do that mission that Jesus gave us? How do we fulfill that vision of being healthy ourselves and being transformed and engaging with people? How does that happen? Now, I know this. I truly am preaching to the choir when it comes to talking about this because I know that many of you, if not most of you, are already committed to the church. And I'm not trying to give anyone a, a guilt trip on this. You're committed to God's work among us. I just want to encourage you to keep it up with the strength that God provides. I want to remind you again to serve out of the overflow of what God has done in our hearts. And I'm not here to give you a guilt trip if you're not. Because here's what we're going to do as a church. It's the same thing we've always done. We're going to work with the body that God has given us and the resources that he has provided for us. I just don't want anyone to miss out on being part of that and part of that blessing. I want to simply invite you to, to, to come on in and welcome you to be planted here. Because I really believe that every one of us, from the oldest to the youngest, have a spot in this church, a place that you can connect. And, and that goes for those of you who have only been here for a week to those who have been here since day one. Because if this is the body that God has put you in, if that's the case, then connect your life to it. And if you've heard these messages these past couple weeks, hopefully you're at the spot where you're like, okay, I've heard it enough, Brett. You've described it. I see it. It's me. Where do I jump in? What does the activity of the church actually look like? So here now is where I'm going to give you now some, some actual application. We're going to go into some details, and I'm going to talk about those things. And again, this is very different than a typical message, as you know, of what we would give. But I, I think it's important that we all know what's happening and, and how we can be involved. And I want to break it down it's into weekly, what we do, and monthly or recurring things that we do, and then annually what we do. And I'm going to just work through them real quickly here. First off, let's take a look at, at weekly, the weekly ministry that we do as a church. Now, we can have gatherings of certain body parts, right? Uh, John talked about life groups, which are smaller groups, or uh, as, as a youth ministry, or as um, women's group, or whatever. And, and that's like gathering together a, a collection of feet, or noses, you know, as the body parts, the elbows. But it's also important that we regularly connect with the entire body. And we do that every single week. You're doing it right now. It's critical that we meet and interact with everyone. And what's the purpose of that? Why do we do this? It's so that we can worship God, so that we can learn about Him, so that we can build relationship, encourage and love one another, and be the visible representation of Jesus to those outside the church. I don't know if you guys saw during the, the music time right now, but we had some guy walking through the back over here putting a finger in the air for all of us to see. What was he, is he mad at one of you guys? No, probably not. He doesn't know you. What are you? What's he flipping off? The visible representation of Jesus in the world. They see it. They know it. It's there. And we pray that God would get a hold of that guy's heart and, and let him understand, no, <laughs> you should be embracing this. Right? That's the way um, the church functions. It's the visible representation of Jesus to those outside the church. And the first way that you can be active weekly in the church is by doing what you're doing right now, participating in a Sunday morning service. And you can also be involved in making those services happen and enhancing them with your gifts. None of us would be surprised to know that this stuff doesn't just set itself up every Sunday morning. The chairs that you're sitting in, 
the little canopies that are providing a little bit of shade, the speakers, the stuff, right? It takes people to do this. In Romans chapter 12, verses 4 to 8, it says this, For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. We've been talking about that for weeks. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, listen to what he says. Let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. He, what's he tell us? He says, look, every one of you, you're all unique body parts. You've all got gifts. You've all got abilities. Use those gifts. Use those abilities in the church community. So, the first question is, is there room for people to get involved on Sunday mornings? My answer, which has always been the answer since I got involved in ministry, and it will always be the answer, is yes, always. There's always room for more. You might get here and say, wow, it's all set up, and everybody looks relaxed. I guess they don't need me helping out. Oh, we'll find a place for you. <laughs> we'll find something for you to do. You walk in, you're like, oh, there's a, they've already got a band. They don't need a musician. Why would I? No. We do, and we want you, and you're welcome. So how specifically does that look? Well, on, uh, on uh, your, your outline, you'll see six things that, that I've broken down that are kind of the overarching umbrellas of, of ministry opportunities that happen for Sunday mornings. All right, first off, set up and tear down. Set up and tear down. We get here at 8 a.m. and show up here to meet the delivery of chairs. And we take those chairs, set them up. The trailer arrives. We unload the trailer. We pull out the gear. We start running the cables and setting things up, popping up the canopies, getting things all organized so that this can happen. All right? So at 8 a.m., and then again at the end of service, by packing up the chairs and tearing everything down and putting it all back where it belongs, that's the setup and teardown team. And what we're looking for right now is we're looking for one person that would like to be the one person, not that does all this on their own, but that knows where everything goes. One leader of that team. That just says, sure, I'd be glad to learn to know how to set things up and how to pack it in the trailer and where everything goes so that when other people show up and volunteers need help, I can tell them, okay, oh, yeah, this goes over there, that goes over there, this is how we, we do it. So we're looking for one leader of that, and then we're looking for four people that would say, yeah, I will, I'll volunteer to be part of that, and we'll put you on a rotation, and a couple times a month, you show up at 8 a.m., you set up, and, and that's a way that you can be involved. So maybe you're like, I can do that. I can set up a chair. I mean, they're not even heavy chairs, guys. <laughs> so you're like, okay, I, I could do that. Maybe that's, that's some place that you can plug in. Secondly, the hospitality ministry. Now, that's the big umbrella of the things that we call hospitality. It's making people feel welcome right? That's what hospitality is. That's the, the, greeter, the greeters, the ushers, um, and eventually that's going to be the food again, and food will return. Food will return, um, and we want that, right? Um, and the hospitality team is just people that have that gift. They're like, oh, you mean I, I would show up to church early, and it's a way that I'm serving by just saying hello to people as they come in the, the doors? Yes, part of the hospitality ministry. Kevin Smith, who's sitting over here, is the leader of that team. And what we're looking for with that, and that's a, a, the biggest team of the teams on Sunday mornings, is we're looking for 11 more people that would say, I want to get involved in that and go on, a, get on a rotation that are working through that in ushering and food and greeting and all that so that you'd serve ultimately about twice a month. All right, third, South Point Kids. As, as you know, we got a lot of kids around here, and we want to step into the, the opportunity that we have to teach them about the stories of the Bible, teach them about Jesus, love on them, and care for them, and watch over them. Ms. Carrie Welch, who's sitting right here, raise your hand, Carrie, is the one who oversees that ministry. And what we're looking for specifically right now with that is four people that would want to assist in children's ministry. 
We've got teachers that can do the bulk of the teaching part. We provide the curriculum and all that. But you just come along and help guide and watch over the kids that are there for assistance. When we can move back indoors, and by the way, I um, want you to know that, that we are actively looking for um, the, the facility to allow uh, us to move back indoors as soon as it's possible. Um, this week, three of us came and met with the, the, um, the person that oversees this facility right here, the buildings inside here, the classrooms here, and toured this facility. This may be a possibility for us. Um, they're going to be reopening the public buildings, at least for parks and recreation, in the middle of June. So we may only be out here for another month and uh, another four weeks, five weeks, uh, maybe it's six, and then we could move back into possibly here or over to the elementary school. Those, the school buildings still aren't open yet. But, but when that happens, then it would be about taking care of the littlest of the littles, the nursery. <laughs> um, and when that happens, we'll have an opportunity for six more people to jump in on a rotation there. All right? Um, number five, one, two, three. Yeah, number f one, two, four. three, four. Thank you, fourth. The fourth thing is with Ignite Youth. That is our teenagers, our middle schoolers, and our high schoolers. We are actively um, in the process of looking to hire a youth director. If you know somebody that you think is a perfect fit, um, we can, we'd love to get an application from them and, and um, give them a description of what we're looking for. But we're looking to hire somebody again. We had a great couple that did that um, for a year with us. They had made a year commitment, and then they were moving back to Northern California, and unfortunately, they're gone. We miss them. But we're looking to hire somebody to come in and be the director of the youth. Beyond that, right now, we could use one more person that would love to teach middle schoolers on Sundays that would be in a rotation with some other teachers on that. All right? Uh, fifth, the audiovisual ministry. That's for those who are technically and artistically inclined. All right? John Carlo over here, he leads that ministry. And what we're looking for there is we're looking for two people that would like to be trained in audio, learning how to run sound and cables and where all these things go, and two people that would love to learn the video end of things. Um, that, that's also a great space for people with artistic um, bent that know how to maybe that have an interest in stage design or visuals or things like that that, that will happen in the future. Um, and if that's kind of your realm, we've got space for, for four more people to plug into that ministry. And then sixth, music, the music ministry, to lead the church in musical worship and expression. Well, the other thing that we're looking for with that youth director, we're actually hoping to find someone who um, has a real passion for Jesus and for youth, but also that might have some musical abilities as well that we can bring them in and help um, with the music ministry in directing that. Come alongside of James, who does a great job, but James has a full-time job. <laughs> and so to be able to have somebody that can help um, work through that and some other, there's room for other worship leaders to be raised up. Additional musicians, there's plenty of space. So those are six areas that are part of what happens on Sunday morning. All right? And there's space for you in one of those six areas. Now, I'm going to keep, keep rolling here. I hope that I haven't lost you. Hang in there. Um, the next thing that we do weekly as a church, we, you hear us talk about it a lot, a lot, is life groups. Currently, Fridays, we have life groups, but any day and any time is fine. But currently, that's the way it works for the hosts and the leaders that we've got in there. But there's always room to expand that. There's room for all of us to be involved in those. And so as we expand those, we're, we'll always be looking for people that feel called to lead those, which are really just a facilitator of a discussion, right? Leaders, hosts. Again, that's the hospitality role. That's the people that, that want to consistently, every week, open up their home to let other people come in. And then members, that's all of us. And as we say, and I'll say again, if you're not part of a life group, you're missing out on a critical critical part of the life of this church. There are lots of good reasons why not to go to life group, I understand. And they're legitimate reasons and good reasons. And it's not always possible for everybody to be there. But if it is possible, stretch for it. I think if you commit yourself to it, you'll see the benefit that so many of us have experienced from them. And by the way, you won't be viewed as a second class member of this church if you don't go to life group. That's not how it works. I only we only push it 
because we know that if you don't go, you're going to miss out on a key part of your growth and health. And we miss out on you as well as you missing out. And both are equally important. All right? So there's the weekly things. Every week, you can come to church on Sunday mornings. Every week, you can get involved in a small group. That happens every week, and it'll continue to happen that way. But then also, there's ways to be involved on like a monthly or even a a recurring thing. Maybe it's not every month, maybe it's every other month, or it's here and there several times throughout the year. All right? One of those areas is also with our youth ministry. Uh, Typically, every month we have Ignite Youth, which is the combined high school and middle schoolers getting together. And they'll do events, they'll do service projects, they do different things. That is going to be one of the things that the youth director that we're going to hire will oversee. But with it, we could have a couple, two more leaders that would say, hey, yeah, I'd love to be able to spend time with the teenagers of our church uh, once a month and commit to be there to help out and, and see that that goes well. All right, another thing that is uh, on a recurring basis, and we're still shaping this up as we go, but is the women's ministry. Danielle, right back here, she's overseeing that ministry. If you want to be involved in that on a recurring basis, you could. The Mexico ministry, uh, Rudy Aguilar and his family lead that. I would point him out, but he's not here because he's in Mexico doing the service over there. And there's opportunities, great opportunities to plug in over there and, and do different things uh, down there. We're, we're going to have a, a work day down in Rosarito um, in the end of May that you'll see coming up. There's different things that will pop up throughout the year where, where we can be involved in that. And then also another area where um, we could use some help is with the finance team. The finance team of our church just provides accountability for the church finances. And we're looking for two more people to join that team. And um, even if it's just a year commitment, it'll only be a couple meetings throughout the year. But we'd, we'd love to have people with that. And by the way, right now, there are no women on that team. So any women, if you would like to be involved in that, you are welcome. Jump in. And just to, to help make sure that we're staying on track as a church financially. All right? And then there's the, the bigger view of the ministry things, the, the annual things that take place. Things like our fall retreat, things like the Bay Day and the all-church picnic or youth camps. There's things that will happen that come up through the year where you might say, hey, I, I love the fall retreat. It's my favorite thing. We go up into the mountains in Idlewild and we spend time together as a church for a couple days and I want to help schedule that. I want to help program that. I want to be involved in the, the leadership of that. Th- there's opportunities for you. All right? So I'm trying to lay out a bunch of these different things for you to see, hey, stuff's happening There's places for me, where do I want to go? So how should you approach one of these roles? If you're like, okay, I've heard the argument for three weeks. I'm ready to move on. So am I. First Peter, it's coming next week. But how do I then get plugged in? Well, here's how I think that you should approach a role if you want to get involved in this way in ministry. First off, see if any of them spark your interest. And you may have heard one thing in there as I was reading through. You're like, oh, I could do that. That sounds fun. I'd enjoy being part of that. If that's the case, then first pray about your choice and say, Lord, is this how you would want me to plug in? And then if that seems good, if you have a piece about that, sign up. Just sign up. And how do I sign up? Well, the Church Center app. If you go there today and you open up your Church Center app, the very front page of that at the home, you'll see a big orange bar that says serve. Click it. And when you click it, you'll see six little boxes for the six ministries that I just described. Click one of those and hit submit. And what will happen is it will go to the prospective leaders that lead that ministry and they will contact you and they'll set up a time. If it's a, a ministry that needs training, they'll tell you, here's, here's where you're, we're gonna have you um, meet, you know, and we're gonna talk about this and we'll train you to do it. Um, and, and then after that, we'll include you going forward. It's that simple. It's not hard. And if you're like, well, I, on the, I, technically, I can't, an app on my phone, I'm not even, my phone's a flip phone, and it, it doesn't have these numbers. Here's what that means. You've already disqualified yourself for the AV, <laughs> but we still love you and want you involved too, so you go to the welcome table at the back at the end of the day, and they'll get you signed up for you, okay? That's how that will work. Now, here's another question that pops up. Well, what if I have a, a gift or a skill that doesn't fit into those ministries? What if I heard that list and I'm like, I don't see anything there. You may have gifts that don't yet fit into what we do, but that doesn't mean that we won't grow into them, all right? 
So let us know. Because if we don't know what your gifts are and you don't express that to us, we may not know. Let's, here's a hypothetical. All right, my favorite instrument in the orchestra, the string section of an orchestra, is a cello. I love the cello. Now, you might come here to church and you're like, well, they don't have a cello player there, so I can't use my gift of, of music in that. Oh, yeah? <laughs> if I knew you played cello, there's a very good chance I would want you involved in this. We could stretch into these areas. You see what I mean? You might say, oh, I, gosh, I, um, I speak Japanese, and I would love to be able to translate for a Japanese population. You guys don't have any Japanese speakers here. Okay, well, maybe we don't right now. But if we do, I now know who to go to. <laughs> You see, what, you see what I mean? So there's other things that may not be listed in that, but you've got to let us know. And here's another question. Well, what if I physically can't be involved in these ministries? Maybe, um, I mean, even right now, maybe there's, there's people that are ill and, and can't get out of the house, can't come to some of these meetings, can't be involved, or they have transportation issues or what, whatever it is. Well, first off, here's how you can be involved. Partner with us in prayer. Commit to doing the spiritual work of soaking this church and these ministries in prayer. Prayer is powerful. That's a huge way you can be involved. And then consider other ways that you can love one another remotely. Maybe it's a phone call. Maybe it's a, a little note of encouragement or continued financial support of the church. There's all sorts of ways that you can still be involved even if you can't physically be involved. Now, I do want to say something about, about serving in the church because here's what happens. Anytime we've got a group even this size together, there's been some of us that have been involved in church in the past. They've been connected to a church. They've got involved in ministry, and they got burned out by it. And guys, I want you to know, as a church, we're, we try to be very sensitive to that. And, and I want to put things um, from a leadership standpoint into place to guard people from burning out in ministry. The leadership team of this church is committed to keep you spiritually healthy. And we don't want to see anybody burn out. You know, and, and that happens. It happens in a physical body too, right? Have you ever heard of carpal tunnel? It's, a, it's an injury that happens from overuse. Okay, it can happen in the church too, where you just serve, 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 and you just empty, empty, empty yourself until you're empty and you're burned out. We don't want that. There is a need for everyone to come in to share the burdens as well as the joys of community. But you can't heal from, from burnout. I don't have time to talk about it right now, but that's part of my testimony. I've burned out in ministry, and I know what it's all about. And, and that is never going to be what, what we want to have happen in this church. We're more concerned about your spiritual health than what you can physically bring. And it's always going to be that way. On the flip side, just in the ways that we avoid burnout, we also want to avoid atrophy you know what atrophy is of a muscle? It's, it's a breakdown of muscle that's not being used, okay? And it's the same way in churches too. You can have people that do too much and burn themselves out, and then you can have people that do too little, and they just waste away. That's a frequent problem in churches as well. Don't let that happen to you. Use it or lose it. You ever heard that? <laughs> Use it. So conclusion, how, as we finish here today, and as I wrap this up, Guys, how do we get healthy and stay healthy? It's by joining in the activity of the church. It's committing yourself to say, let's just do this. Let's do this together. And let's see what God does. Let's see how he, he grows it and how he would have it um, work in this community. So three commitments I want to leave you with here today. They're short. First off, just commit to being here. And you've already done that today. Commit to being here. We can underestimate what God does through the simple act of gathering together. Sometimes the smallest words or gestures can have the biggest impact. Sometimes I show up here on a Sunday morning and even as a pastor, I don't necessarily want to be here all the time either. But I get here and I see you guys or I talk to one of you and I'm encouraged and I'm built up and I'm like, yes, I'm so glad I went to church today. It matters just being here. That's the first commitment. Just commit to be here. Then secondly, push it a little farther. Commit to living here. Actually investing yourself, your life. That's where the participation thing happens. Build real relationships with people. It's so easy to just come to a church and pop in. It's hard in a small church. It's really easy in a big church to just show up, sit down, listen to a sermon, and leave and never have any connection with that church. It's a little harder when it's a small church because we know if you're here or not here. 
Everybody, we've got attendance in the back. They've got all the notes down. So we know, we know. No, but invest yourself. And to really build relationships with people, guys, it does take more than an hour a week. It's sometimes hard, sometimes bumpy at the beginning. It takes a commitment. And then finally, so commit to being here, commit to living here, and then just commit to giving here. Choose to serve and to sacrifice and to give of yourself. And like I told you, it's a reciprocal thing. You give and you receive. And the more you put in, the more that you're getting out of it. Jesus said in Matthew 10, 7 to 8, he said, and as you go, he's talking to his disciples here, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you've received, freely give. This is who we are as Christians. We have the privilege of knowing God. And part of the ways that, that God grows us so that we can fulfill that mission that he's given us is by being connected to the body, to be able to have all the, the life and the health that we need to have. So as we finish here today, I want to encourage you guys to think about these things. I'm not saying these things out of a, wow, we really just need more people, and so I just hope I can get up there and fire them up to get them here. It's not about that. <laughs> it's the spiritual health the spiritual growth. That's what we're caring about. And I know that there are some of you here today that are like, man, I'm, I'm hurt. I'm kind of broken and beat up right now. And I don't feel like I've got anything else to give. I want to encourage you to seek the Lord on that and see if part of the way to health and wholeness isn't through that, isn't by stepping into those places, those life-giving places. That's what I've found in ministry in my life. You know, uh, having opportunities to go on short-term missions trips. It's always fun because you get this, uh, a mission somewhere, you know. Maybe it's uh, overseas somewhere or whatever, and you find out about this church that needs something done, a building built or a, a, a kid's ministry set up or something. And you think, yeah, I'm going to go and do this thing for God. And what always happens when you go on a short-term missions trip <laughs> is you go out there and you do the thing that you're called to do, and then what happens is you're blessed, <laughs> And you come back and you realize, whoa, I thought I was there to give, but I received. It's, it's the way God is. God is never outgiven. He always meets us where we step in, out in faith. And so I want to encourage you guys to be the people that are stepping out in whatever way that he's calling you to do. All right? So pray with me now, and, and let's ask the Lord to give us some wisdom on that. God, I thank you for your church. And I thank you for your people. I thank you for every soul that is here today and I know God that you have a plan for this church for this body of believers and Lord I know that when we all share the burden the burden becomes lighter and the heavy burdens we know that we can't even carry you're the one who carries those Lord and today I just pray that you would through your voice, Lord, that you would draw people um, to maybe grow and stretch in areas that they've never grown before. I pray that they would be committed to the work that you're do doing here and that we would be a church of people that are in it with you and in it with each other and that this body would be a healthy body, a vital body, a body that is alive, a body that is growing and a body that's doing all that you would have it do in this community. Lord, we pray for this community around us. I pray for all these houses in these neighborhoods and all the people that are living in these houses. So many people that do not know you. And even if their life seems to be going really well from the outside, if they don't know you, something's missing and something's broken. And so, Lord, I pray that we would be the hands and feet of Jesus, the body of Christ, visible and evident in this community, and that we would bring the truth and the healing power of your spirit into the lives of these people. Lord, save people, draw people, and may your word go forth clearly and powerfully, changing our community, changing us as we watch you work and as we invest ourselves in that work that you're doing. I thank you for every person here, Lord. I pray that you'd bless them. 
bless them as they go through their week. Strengthen them and encourage them. If there are any here today that are, are just feeling weak or feeling discouraged, I pray that you give them encouragement. If there are any here today that are struggling with anxiety, Lord, that you would give them peace. If anyone who's here with depression, that you would free them from that, give them hope. Lord, that you would do what only you can do. Teach us to rely on you and to follow after you with our whole selves. Thank you, Lord. We love you. And we ask that you would finish out this service, Lord, in your presence, that we would hear your voice and know that you're near. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen.